Hi there everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. My name is Rebecca and if this is your first time visiting then please do make sure that you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of my weekly tutorials. Now on my channel one of my most popular videos has always been my cluster stitch tutorial and for quite some time I've been meaning to do it as a centre out square blanket and it's just something that I've just not gotten around to doing until now and it's taken me a, a few days this week just to sit and figure it all out and get all my stitches and tension and everything like that correct. So it is a very slightly different cluster stitch to my previous tutorial but I just found that it was the best way for it to work in this particular pattern. So. I'm doing this blanket now, this is one, let me just zoom out a little bit. So this is one, obviously I know it. these are beautiful, soft, pretty feminine colours, but you can obviously use absolutely any yarn that you wish, whether it's all one colour, it would make an absolutely stunning, beautiful cream or white blanket, all in one colour, it would look amazing. But obviously variegated yarns like these, or even the boho spirit like this one, they look great. So yeah, I'm going to obviously finish this as a proper blanket but it's big enough now for me to be able to show you so that you can get a good idea of what it is going to look like the bigger your project gets and it's really pretty so let's just crack on now with the yarn details and the pattern tutorial. So you can obviously use absolutely any yarn that you wish for the tutorial um, you can use solid colours, you can do a whole thing using just one ball that changes colour or all of the same colour, it is absolutely completely up to you. But in the tutorial I will be using two different yarns so that you know how to change colour, when to change colour etc. And I'm going to be using these two shades of the Hayfield Spirit DK. And it's obviously, as you can see, a variegated yarn between the two different shades. And I just thought these colours would go really nicely together to give an almost floral effect. So obviously pink of the petals with the green of the leaves. So it will be more pink than green, but I just thought that they complemented each other really beautifully. And I'm really interested to see how they work up together. And you can buy these from Snufflebee and her link is in the description as always. This one is the one that has been done all with one ball of yarn and this is the Boho Spirit, again available from Snufflebean and it's great for this because you don't have to change colour so obviously if you're not a lover of weaving in ends then using a yarn cake or something is absolutely brilliant idea and you can see you get a beautiful stitch definition and the lovely colours throughout as well. So obviously you're just going to use whatever hook size your yarn recommends but if you want it to be a slightly looser finish um, with slightly more drape then just go up a half hook size or even a full hook size that is completely up to you. So you could start in two ways if you prefer to start with a magic circle that is completely up to you but I know a lot of people don't like using the magic circle method. So we go into chain four, one two, three, four and then you're going to insert your hook into that first chain and slip stitch to create a circle. So yarn over and pull through both and that now has given us a little circle here to work our next stitches into. You want to chain one and that is just to get out of the circle and now we're going to start working all of our clusters into the centre. So we're doing three treble clusters, so that is UK treble in the US, these are your double crochet clusters. So to do a treble cluster, you want to yarn over, insert into the centre, yarn over and pull up. You have three loops and you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Yarn over, go back into the centre circle, yarn over and pull up. You'll have four loops this time, yarn over, pull through two, and you'll do that one final time. So yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, 
and again now you have got four loops left on your hook, yarn over, pull through all of those loops and chain one and that chain one is part of your cluster so always remember that whenever I say a cluster stitch it's all of those stitches and then the chain one. We're now going to create our first corner so you want to chain three so one, two and three and then back into this centre circle now you're going to do another cluster stitch so yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up yarn over, pull through two yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up yarn over, pull through two and one last time, yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up and yarn over, pull through two and you'll have four loops again on your hook yarn over and pull through all of those loops chain one to complete your cluster so that is our first corner space, it's got the two clusters separated by the chain three. We're now going to do a side technically, so you want to chain one. And then we're going to create our next corner which is going to be a treble cluster. Pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull up, pull through two. And one last time, pull through two and then yarn over, pull through all of those loops, chain one to complete your cluster. We need now to create our next corner space so you're going to chain three and then your next cluster. through two pull through all of your loops and finish your cluster with the chain one and if you're unsure of where your corners are or anything like that just pop stitch markers into each of your chain three spaces and that way you'll know exactly how many clusters you need to do so you want to continue that now you want to do that another two times so you'll chain one and complete your next corner which will be two clusters separated with your chain three. So if you want to do that now but rewind if you have any issues and I will meet you in just a second. So I've got my two clusters, my chain three for my corner and my final cluster which I finished with that chain one. We now want to join to the beginning of the round so you want to do your chain one because this is a side of your square and then you can see here you have got a stitch just there at the top of your cluster. So you can see you've got your cluster here and then the stitch at the top. You don't want the chain stitch that you did which is the one next to it. You want the larger stitch at the top of that cluster and you'll slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through both. And that is how you should be looking at this point. So as I say, I'm going to do a couple of rounds in this colour. I just feel like it looks better once you've done the next round in this colour as well. So you want to slip stitch into your corner space. And in this corner space now you're going to do a UK double crochet. So in the US this is your single crochet. You're going to insert your hook, yarn over and pull up, yarn over and pull through both and if you wish you can pop a stitch marker in the top of this stitch for when you come back around. We're going to create a corner so chain three and back into that corner space you're going to do another UK double so yarn over and pull up, yarn over pull through both. Chain two and once you've chained two, you, we're going to work in between the two clusters. So you can see there's chain space here in between. You're going to pop a double crochet into there. Chain two, jump over the next cluster and work straight into that corner space. So you'll do your double crochet, 
chain three for your corner and double crochet back in that same corner space. Chain two to work down the sides. Do a double crochet in between your clusters on the edge. Chain two, jump over the next cluster and work your corner space. So chain three for the corner and another double crochet. Chain two, double crochet in between your clusters, chain two and a corner space. So if you want to carry on doing that all the way around, remembering to chain two to jump your clusters on the straight edge and chain three for your corner space. I've worked that all the way around now and I'm ready. I've done my final chain two to jump over this very final cluster stitch and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet from the beginning of the round and if you've popped a stitch marker in it will be very easy to spot and slip stitch. So that is the end of round two. I'll do one final round in this colour and then I will be changing colour for one round. So I'm going to chain one, but that's never going to be incorporated into the pattern. It is simply just to move up out of the way. And then under that chain three, because we're in a corner space, so it's a chain three, we are going to create a new corner and we're back to doing our cluster stitches. So you will do one cluster stitch. So it's the beginnings of three trebles, yarn over and pull through them all, chain one to finish the stitch, create your new corner by chaining three and then back under that chain three you're going to do the other half of your corner, so another cluster. chain one to complete your cluster and then now we've got two chain two spaces along this straight edge and we're going to be working our clusters underneath those chain twos so our side clusters are going to be separated by a chain one so chain one and then cluster under that chain two space chain one to complete your cluster and then chain one to separate and then again under that chain two you'll do your next cluster chain one to complete and then chain one to move again and we're back to a chain three corner space where you will do cluster chain three cluster and hopefully you should now be able to work that all the way around but again rewind if you're not sure just to firm up and I will meet you as you get back to the other side. I'm pretty much back round now I've worked under my final chain two space and I'm ready to close off the round so I need to make sure I do my chain one and then slip stitch into the top of the cluster so you can see Got my cluster here and this is the top of it this long looking stitch here so again slip stitch to close and if you're carrying on in the same color then you can start off the last round like we did with when we were doing our chains round but if you're changing color I would suggest always changing color at the end of a cluster round because it just seems to look better that way but it's a complete personal preference. So like I say, if you've got a yarn cake that you're just continuing with then 
start this next round in exactly the same way as we did the chain round last time. But if you're changing colour then chain one and snip off and just tighten to close. So that is how we are looking at the moment. So we're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to start with a standing UK double. Now you can either start in the same place for the corner that you'll have all of your joints, it's totally up to you, or you can start in any corner space. The choice is yours. So you want to insert your hook into one of the corner spaces, yarn over and pull up, you'll have your two loops and yarn over, pull through both. And then you will continue as normal, so chain three because we're in the corner and double crochet, chain two and then double in between your clusters, chain two, double in between, chain two, double, chain two and then you're at the corner space so you go into double, remember US single, <laughs> chain three for the corner and a double back in and you'll just work that now all the way round and again, once you get back round, finish with your final chain two and slip stitch to close on the top of that very first double crochet. So that is how we are looking now. And then to move on to your cluster round, you're going to chain one and then go straight into your first corner space with your treble cluster. So I will just do a recap on this final round and then hopefully you'll have all of the information you need to continue. So chain three to separate for the corner space and then another cluster in that same space. Always remember that your chain one needs to close the cluster, it doesn't count as your stitches in between. Chain one and then under your chain twos all along the side edge. So I will meet you in just a second where we will finish off this round again and I'll give you just a little tip for finishing off. Okay, so I'm ready to close off again. I've done my cluster and my chain one to separate and I'm going to close to the top of that first cluster stitch as normal. And I want to change colour again now so I'm going to chain one and snip off. Pull that out and tighten up. And as I say, this is how you should be looking now and you can obviously either leave them as beautiful small cluster stitch squares instead of a traditional granny square and you can make these into a larger blanket or you can carry on going to make it as big as you want it to be. But I'd just quickly show you the back as well. It is equally as beautiful on the back. It looks completely different from the front but very beautiful. So I hope that that is everything you will need to know to be able to make this beautiful cluster stitch blanket and remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with all of my future tutorials. But that's it for this one and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.